everyone, Zach here. Welcome back to the 13th episode of Cooking with Zach Live. As usual, I'm just going to take a few minutes for everyone to get inside this broadcast. But while that's happening, I actually just wanted to kind of, as usual, talk to you guys about what's going on and with, in the dish that we're going to be making today. So as you all know, Super Bowl was yesterday, and even though the Broncos won, I was rooting for the Panthers, but I'm happy for the Broncos. And inside the halftime, uh, sorry, and it was a really, really fun time. I had an amazing time. I had pizza with my family, and it was really, really, really fun. And, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up, guys, so I thought it would be a really, really good idea to make you guys a delicious Valentine's Day dish that you guys can make at your home for a loved one or a special someone. And this dish, and now it may seem kind of complicated, but believe it or not, it is so delicious and it's so easy to make. And it's literally to die for. So at the Super Bowl halftime show, inside the crowd, Coldplay asked everyone, well, it well, spelled out, what was it? Oh my god, I forgot. Believe in love. Yeah, believe in love. And then that's really awesome, but then you also gotta believe in cooking and you gotta believe in love for cooking. So it's a really, really amazing broadcast, especially since Valentine's Day is coming up, like I said. You guys definitely gotta try out this dish. I mean it'll be sure to impress that special someone or a family member or in fact your whole family. And you know what? It's a really, really nice treat. Kind of treat yourself and your family to an upscale gourmet dish for Valentine's Day. And you know what the best thing about it is that it's not not that hard to make. It's literally so easy and it may look complicated with the plating. That's trying to make all my stuff look, but it's so easy and it's so delicious and it's absolutely perfecto. So uh, before we get started, I leave you guys with this yummy dishes. So it's a chicken lad stuffed with a slice of rare cheese, some sauteed onions and mushrooms served with an arugula pesto. We have a beautiful pomegranate reduction just to kind of give that red kind of Valentine's Day color. And then we're also going to be doing a, what's it called? Yeah, fried wonton strip. And lastly, some roasted cauliflower that is absolutely delicious. And let me just tell you that this roasted cauliflower is so good. It's literally better than chips. Because one day when I was making it, my whole family, except for my sister, loves, sorry, hates cauliflower. And they didn't want to eat it, but when I forced it in their throat. No, I'm just kidding. But, but when they had it, they absolutely loved it. So I know you guys are going to love it. So you guys definitely got to try it. And I know you guys are going to enjoy it. So without further ado, let's get started. So like I said, the chicken roulade is going to be stuffed with our sautéed onions and mushrooms. So that's actually the first thing that we're going to be doing. Say, Thursina Fatima joined you from Indonesia. Say Sorry. hi. Somebody joined you from Indonesia, so they're staying up. Okay. Why should we okay. so okay. late? Yeah, I actually want to thank all my fans from Indonesia, especially since you guys are waking up at like 4 a.m. I think. Seven. Or seven. Or like, like 7 a.m. in the morning just to watch this. So I really, really appreciate you guys coming to watch the broadcast, and I appreciate everyone supporting me and that's watching. All right, guys, so we're going to get started. So here I have my cleaned and washed out mushrooms, and I already took out the ends of some of some of them. What's your favorite fish? Favorite fish? Um, I like salmon and cod. That's probably my favorite. So what we're going to do is we're just going to slice them like that, and we're going to be dicing these into little cubes. And this is going to this is actually going to be the filling for our chicken or lie. So now what you want to do is slice them that way, and just kind of dice them into your little cubes. There we go. Is that a shiitake mushroom? What kind of mushroom is it? Oh, yeah. I forgot to ask you. Thanks so much for mentioning that. This is actually a portobello mushroom. Now, you could use a shiitake or cremini or chanterelle, any kind of mushrooms you can get your hand on. The reason why I picked the portobello, I mean, it's such a classic, beautiful mushroom flavor, and it's really, really delicious. It's going to provide an amazing earthy flavor, and it's going to be really good. All right. So just continue to slice those in. And then we're just going to kind of stack them up like Jenga and slice them. Are your fingers comfortable when you chop like that? Are your fingers comfortable when you chop like that? Uh, when I first started chopping like this, I was really, really scared. I was like quivering. and. <sighs> but now after a while, you get kind of used to it. So. All right, so we're just going to continue to dice up these last ones. Almost done. And like I said, we're going to be sautéing these with our beautiful onions. 
and it's going to be really, really delicious. Somebody says they love your watch. What kind of watch is they it? They love my watch. It's actually just a regular Timex watch. I've had this for like four years now, but it's still good, so I like it too. Oh, yeah, I actually forgot to show you guys this. And I'm going to actually be posting this. Um, this is actually called a Simbi Eye. It's Simbi Haiti. I uh, kind of like a bracelet. They, they sell like hair bands and all this stuff. And while I was on my way to MasterChef Junior, uh, I actually picked one up at the airport as like a good luck charm. And then they actually saw me wearing it on the show. So they sent me a huge goodie bag. And it's really, really awesome. So I'm going to definitely post something about that. And you guys actually got to check them out. You can go to their website. They have all the social media. So definitely kind of check that out. Are you going to time yourself tonight? Are you going to time yourself tonight? Uh, no, I'm actually not going to be timing myself tonight because I just really wanted to make sure that you guys can exp that I can properly explain this Valentine's dish for you guys. So that way if you guys end up cooking it, that I'll make sure it can be perfect because I want to make sure that it's that you guys get everything. And I hope that if you end up cooking it, that it turns out perfect. Somebody said you got a new haircut. Got a new haircut. Uh, no, my haircut's actually the same. Every once in a while, like, the way it's kind of off, we just, we just tinker with it. So, but it's basically the same haircut. All right, so I'm going to put this inside my bowl. And if you'll excuse me for one second, I actually just forgot a towel. All right, so I got my bright red towel, and then now we're just going to be continuing to slice up our... Mushroom. I uh, know the mushrooms are done. We're actually I'm just going to dice up our onion. Someone said they're waiting for the venison dish. You can talk to her what happened there. Yeah, I actually have a really sad and funny story for you guys. This week, believe it or not, I was actually going to do the venison dish. Yesterday, I had it all planned out. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go grab the venison. And then tomorrow morning, I'll do my dry run, get all that done. And it was all ready to go. So... All we had to do was just find the venison. So we called about 15 places in Orlando and in like Jacksonville and stuff. And believe it or not, I could not find one single piece of venison. How? I don't know. So I started to panic because it was literally at 5 o'clock last night. And my broadcast is today and I have no clue what the heck I'm doing. And like I said, I was going to do the venison dish. I had it all planned out. But then I kind of just scrolled, scrolled through all the dishes that I had done before that I really wanted to teach you guys. So this is kind of why I'm doing this one. I mean, like, this is not, like, a bad dish. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. But I really want to do that venison dish for you guys. But I sadly could not find any venison places in Florida. Or in Orlando. Or in Jacksonville. Yeah, or in Jacksonville either. We, we found one in Jacksonville. So we'll do that. We found one in Jacksonville. No, oh no, it ended up being just an order. Okay. So we, so we didn't find any. Unless you were to, like, order them online, but I don't know if we do that. All right, so I got all the seed, finally. I have my onion, and we're all just going to go across there. And just go across here, slice that way. I'm going to do about three that way. Four, let's say, all right. <laughs> and just kind of mince that up. How in the world are you not crying? How in the world are you not crying? Oh, I actually did a post about this a little while ago. The reason why I don't cry when I chop onions is actually because how sharp your knife is. It's not how fast you cut it, it's how sharp your knife is. So if you have a really kind of dull knife, then you, then onions will make you cry. But if you have a nice sharp knife, then they won't. But I still occasionally. Uh, Luke said that tip worked for him, the sharp knife. Yeah, it worked, right? Y yeah, you guys actually have to try that out. When I first, like, figured it out, I didn't think it was anything, but then it actually turned out to help me a lot. So, All right, so we have our little mixture of our portobellas. I actually have too much onion in this, but you know what, guys? That is totally okay. So I'm going to set this onion aside into a little bowl, and then I'll just dice up one, more, one or two more, more mushrooms. Almost got myself, but I didn't. <laughs> All right, so like I said, just kind of pile them up, and then just do a slice one way, and just dice that up. And there we go. You know what? All right, I'm just gonna kind of chop these up again, because I don't want to have too big, uh, too many onions, but then not enough, uh, 
mushrooms. So you want to make sure that you have a good ratio between onions and mushrooms. What's the ratio? What's the ratio? You want to make sure that you don't have too many onions, so about half and half is perfect. All right, there we go. That should be good. All right, I'm not going to waste too much time doing that. Um, question, what brand of kitchen knives do you use from you now? What brand? I just got a question from you now. What brand of kitchen knives do you use? I actually use uh, Tojiro Japanese knives. I want to show them? I'll yeah, put yeah, yeah, on. yeah. All right, time. cut it time. Yep. Those are absolutely amazing. I got these about, oh yeah, I actually have an embarrassing but really hilarious story that actually kind of isn't funny for my mom and dad. So about two years ago, I ended up getting these knives and one day I was sharpening it with this weird thing, the one like that when you're not supposed to. And then the blade ended up getting completely torn apart. So I just like completely panicked and I was like, oh, what the heck am I going to do? I mean, these the, like the like the knives are like 40 bucks. And my parents literally just bought them for me about six months ago. So, oh God. But thankfully, my mom and my dad are pretty darn cool. Turn up. Should you sharpen your knives or no? Explain how you sharpen. Yeah, so basically, here. Oh, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. I actually use a sharpening Hold stone. On a yeah. So we can see. Yep. So I actually use something called a sharpening stone. And basically, what you do is, I'm not going to actually do it because it's dirty. So you would go like that, and then kind of like that on the lower grit. You have a video, actually. Yeah, I actually have a video that I did. I haven't posted it. That, yeah, we haven't posted that yet. And I actually have a lot of YouTube videos, but I haven't got a chance to post it. So I'll try to get those done. All right, so our pan is nice and hot. Just going to add your oil in. And then just put in your onions and mushrooms. Let me just show them how Was it hard filleting the fish? Luke is asking. Was it hard filleting the fish? Um... Well, before I went on to MasterChef, I kind of knew that I was going to play fish, and I never really worked with a lot of seafood, so my neighbor, John, actually taught me how to work with some of the seafood, and I was kind of afraid to touch the fish at first, I mean, because I'd never really touched one. I wasn't sure how I'd feel, but it turned out to be nothing, so. But playing the fish, um, it wasn't too hard, it wasn't too hard, but it's kind of, it's a little tricky at times. All right, so our pepper. So did you repeat what kind of knives you have again for, yeah. for Periscope? Yeah, so I have a Torjiro uh, Santoku. I think it's my pronunciation's bad. But it's a Torjiro knife. Uh, I got these on Amazon for about $40. If you guys want like these, just like DM me, right? And I can yeah, send, like, just email. Yeah, yeah just, you can just email me regarding them, and I'll be more than happy to send you guys a link. Actually, I have another one. Oh, one second. It's right here. This is my other one. I prefer to use this one because it's a little smaller, but I use that one a lot too. Like my absolute favorite knives. They're super lightweight and they have a much thinner blade and they're really, really sharp. So I love these knives. Our question, what made you want to be a chef? What made me want to be a chef? Um, I got cooking by the episode of MasterChef Junior and then I, was, I actually used to hate to cook, but then I love to cook now. So that's kind of what made me. All right, so now we're actually just going to be pounding out our chicken. Ah, okay, so here I have some plastic wrap, and now what you want to do, like whenever you're pounding out any kind of protein, you always want to make sure that you pound it out over surround wrap, because what this is going to do is when you use your mallet, it's not going to get it all, it won't stick to it, and it won't get it contaminated, but lastly what it's going to do is it's going to help you just pound it out a little better. Can you just tell people that if we miss a question, just to repeat it? Yeah, if I if I miss a question, I apologize for that. Um, just re, kind of retype it in, and I'll be sure to get back to you. And if I miss that, um, I'll also be answering questions at the end of the broadcast. So if I miss one, I apologize about that. But I will try to get to as many of them as I can. All right, so I have my little piece of chicken, and I just want to put that inside the center. I'm just going to put that right there. And we're, I'm actually just going to quickly give my veggie toss. And just continue to cook that. Just going to add a little bit more oil. Uh, Zach, why don't you repeat what you're making? So today we're going to be making a chicken roulade stuffed with Gruyere cheese, some sauteed onions and mushrooms with roasted cauliflower and arugula pesto, 
a pomegranate reduction in crispy wonton strips. And another question, sorry, I missed this one. Does yeah. your mom do any cooking with you around? Does your mom do any cooking with you around? Um, she's usually kind of the one that cooks the big, big meals when we're really busy and stuff. So she's kind of like the, she cooks a lot, but I try to cook. I'm always inside the kitchen, either cooking, making dinner, or helping her out. So how long do you cook the mushrooms for? How long do you cook the mushrooms for? So we're going to be cooking these till they start to get a little brown. And mushrooms actually have a really high water content. So when, when you cook them separate inside a pan, they're actually going to shrink, and the water is going to come out, and it'll flood your pan. So you just have to let that reduce. So we're going to be cooking these till they're nice and golden brown, and everything starts to caramelize just a little bit. All right, let's head on back here, and we're going to pound out our chicken. One second, then. Yeah. All right, so I laid out a piece of saran wrap on our chick on our cutting board. And you put the chicken and the saran wrap right on top. And now I actually butterflied my piece of chicken, which means I just sliced it in half because it was kind of thick. All right, so now I have my beautiful Thor's hand. Just kidding, it's a meat mallet. And butterfly, what you want to do is go on the flat side, not on out. No, I'm just kidding. You want to go on the flat side of it, and you just want to now. Now, whenever you're pounding this out, you want to go hard. I'm gonna go down, but then kind of, so, so it's like fat. I don't know. You hit it hard. Okay, I'll, I'll dumb it down. Hit it hard and swish it off to the side. That's it. Okay, so boom, like that, nice and hard. And you wanna work your way from the middle through the side. So it's nice and thin. When did you start cooking and how did you learn so much at such a young age? When did you start cooking? Um, I started cooking about two years ago, and I learned so much from my online culinary school, and I actually watch a lot of cooking shows. And I've got another question. Sorry, I missed you put the stems on the mushrooms. What's up? I missed I didn't you put the stems on the mushrooms. Yeah, so I actually just grabbed the, the stems out of the mushrooms. Now, you could use them if you want. When I make stuffed mushrooms, I usually cut the ends off, chop them up, and then stuff it. But today, I'm just going to be cutting them off. All right, so just quickly give that another pulse. And just continue to let that cook. All right, so I'm just going to continue to pound out our chicken. So it's nice and thin. Almost ready to go. And like I said, this dish is, like, really, really easy. I mean, our cauliflower is going to be done like that. Everything is looking really, really good. So our chicken kind of needs to be just a little bit thinner, I think. Then you want to pound it up till it's too thick or thin, because then if it's too thick, it will not roll properly, but if it's too thin, it could rip, but it's fine. Almost done, guys. All right, I think that should be good. Um, you know what? I'm going to be just safe here, and I'm just going to pound it out for another second. Sorry about this. It's really annoying. One second. Good. That, that's good now. Alright, so I'm just going to put this aside here, and we're going to be rolling this guy up later. So that's kind of like my mise en place, I guess. Alright, so I'm just going to Jamie Collins, he is a number one fan on you now. Hi, Jamie Collins, thanks so much for your support. 400 likes. Wow, thank you so much. Alright, so our mushrooms and our onions are starting to get brown. We're just going to add a little bit of oil in there and just continue to let those cook. But while that's happening, we're actually just going to be starting on our roasted cauliflower. Now, like I said, this is freaking amazing. I mean, it's so good. I literally could eat this over chips any day. And the, you know what the best part about it is that kids my age and moms Try to get your kids to start like roasting vegetables, especially cauliflower. I mean, it's so good. It's literally to die for. All right. So for the cauliflower, I'm trying not to make too much of a mess of this, but we're just going to take the top off. Now, I don't need too much of it, so you could obviously use the sides and just try to get all the meat off the cauliflower. All right. That should be enough. I'm going to set that aside. Say hi to Elias. Hi, Elias. <laughs> all right. So just... Oh, making a big mess, but that's okay. I'm going to try to keep this as clean as I can. 
very carefully. Now, when you're working with this, you want to make it nice and gentle because you don't want to turn into crumbs. All right. Just a little bit more. Now, you want to make sure that you get all the ends off because no one likes the ends. I'm actually just going to give them a quick pause. And these are just about done. Let's take a look. So how do you know nice they're done? See the onion's starting to turn a little brown. You see that one right there? It's starting to get a golden brown color. Really, really good. All right. So we already seasoned them. They're good. And now whenever you're stuffing them, you always want to make sure that you cool down your mixture because you don't want it to be hot when you're uh, rolling up your cheese. All right. What is the longest you've cooked in the kitchen without a break? Is that a question? Yeah. Yeah, without a break. Um... And how old are you? I'm 13 years old. And long as I cook without a break, um, I don't. I'm, I'm not really sure. Probably on one of the Master Chef challenges. Yeah, that was probably the longest because I was really, really tired. After Say the thanks to Sharon. She just Sharon Starzik. She gave you lots Thank of life. Sharon S. Sharon S. Right. Thank you, Sharon. All right. So continue to chop up the ends of these. All right, so now I got a little tip for you guys. Whenever you're roasting any kind of vegetables, you always want to have some sort of fat, whether it's oil, peanut oil, greasy oil, duck fat, or butter. You always want to make sure you have some sort of oil to coat them and slam. So I'm going to be using butter because I just love my vegetables. All right, so I'm going to put that inside of my bowl. And I'm just going to put this inside the microwave just to kind of let it melt up. Good little piece of butter. Hey, everything tastes better with butter. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to stick this in the microwave for about 15 seconds. 20 seconds, actually. Okay, Luke is asking, do you worry about uniform knife cuts? Do you worry about uniform knife cuts? Yeah, I actually try to make sure that all my knife cuts are very good. But for something like cauliflower, I mean, it's such like a, it's like a rustic kind of ingredient. I mean, it's not, I mean, you, you don't really have to cut cauliflower. I just really want to chop it up. All right, so that's done. And now I'm just going to take my fork and just kind of melt and whisk around the rest. Oh, a question for you now from Daniel. My little brother wants to know, who got you into cooking? Um, I just got a question from me now. My little brother wants to know, uh, who got you into cooking? Um, my mom and my sister kind of really got me into cooking. I used to hate to cook, but then... They really encouraged me, and then she got me in the kitchen and helped me out with my tennis, and then, so they were probably my, my biggest cooking inspirations. All right, so I have my salt and pepper inside my little butter mixture. Say hi to Alex at you, at you now. Hi, Alex. You almost missed the show. Oh, almost missed it? Uh, because of the time. Time change. Oh, the time change. Yeah, you better tell everybody yeah. the time change. Oh, yeah. So now, from now on, our periscopes are going to be on Monday, 7 p.m., uh, just because I'm having, a, I'm really, really busy. I got a lot of interviews this week, and I'm trying to get it done. I really want to do this, so I thought it'd be better if I just move it to Monday. Just how we, I really make sure that I can do this broadcast for you guys. All right, so just a little bit of lemon juice in there. Now I'm going to put my cauliflower in there just to kind of make sure that it gets nice and tossed around. All right, that's more than enough. So what I'm going to do is let me grab a bowl. Zach, do you want to get the bowl? The mushrooms that? out during the view. Oh, yeah. Just oh, yes. Alright, so I'm going to put the leftover. One person said, Congrats on the You Now Award. Congrats on the You Now Award. Yeah, I actually, did. yeah, I actually found that, found that out today. I was extremely shocked. Like, I could not believe it. And now, whenever I try to, like, start a broadcast, it shows, uh, a, a editor's choice, which is pretty, pretty cool. I did not think that would ever happen. So. Better ask him about, tell him about the other nomination. Oh, yeah. I actually got nominated for the web series on the Young best Entertainment. Web what? Best web show. Yeah, the best web show for the Young Entertainment Awards, which is pretty darn cool. That's going to be in, in L.A. in March. So it, whoever's there, you guys. Everybody. What? Thank you to everybody. Oh, yeah. I just really want to thank everyone. I mean, I could not believe I got nominated, which is pretty, pretty cool. All right. So I'm just going to kind of. Put the excess stuff. Try to keep a nice clean cutting board. Alright, so, so 
I'm going to grab my spoon, turn on the cauliflower, just so everything's nice and coated with the butter. Oh, one sec. Oh, one person wants to know what you're making. Um, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be making a chicken roulade with roasted cauliflower, arugula, pesto, pomegranate reduction, and just for some texture, a crispy wonton strip. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Alright. Can I take so a look at that before you put it on? You wanna put it on the board? Yeah, yeah one sec. Take a look at that. It's nicely tossed. Beautiful. All right, now I also, sorry, I also added in some lemon juice. And what the lemon juice is going to do is really going to brighten up the cauliflower. It's going to give it that beautiful, bright flavor, and it's going to completely wake it up. So when you taste it in your mouth, it's going to have a nice punch of a seed to it. All right, so I'm just going to kind of spread that around. How long have you been cooking for? I've been cooking for two years now. And Luke's asking, should he film his halibut? Should he film his halibut? That he's making. Luke. Oh, like, film it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. You guys should. Like, anything you guys' creations, I mean, I if you guys tag me, I'd be more than happy. I'm so excited for you guys, just so you can see what you're up to you're cooking, so definitely tag me in a photo. All right, so cauliflower is going in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. Oh, let's take a look. Uh, one person wants to know, have you ever cooked at a restaurant? Have you ever cooked at? Um, no, I actually haven't cooked at a restaurant yeah, oh, one sec. No, I have never cooked at a restaurant, so that's kind of new. All right, so I'm just going to kind of clean off my... Who is kitchen. filming? Oh, Who's filming? My amazing mom's filming. All right, so just kind of cleaning that off. Setting that aside. Always make sure that you have a nice and clean workstation. And we're actually just going to be starting... Somebody needs cooking. motivation from you because they hate cooking? You need motivation because they hate cooking. That is an amazingly good question. So like I said, I hated to cook, uh, well, at least two years ago. But I absolutely hated to cook. I didn't even, all I wanted to do was just eat the food. So a piece of advice. I would try to do something. The real thing is just get into the kitchen and just really start cooking something. Like whether you prefer sweet dishes or savory, then just cook a sweet one if you like. I can make French toast. I have the recipe for that on my website. It's my homemade secret recipe. So yeah, well, like I said, try doing something you like in the kitchen, whether it's savory or sweet. Just really kind of get inside it. All right. So before we start our pest, sorry, before we start our chicken and our pomegranate reduction, I actually wanted to get our pesto sauce done. Now, today we're not going to be making a classic pesto. We're going to be doing, we're going to be subbing out the basil. For arugula, now arugula is typically a lettuce, I mean, pretty popular to eat in salads. But what this is going to do, it's going to add a beautiful little bitter flavor to it, and it's going to be so delicious. Alright, so here I have my arugula. I'm just going to put that right in. Oh, one person wants to know, sorry, I missed this question, from Alex. That you always cook so healthy, but what's your comfort junk food? I just got a question. You always cook so healthy, but what's your uh, favorite junk food, your comfort junk food? Um, hmm. he has lots. <laughs> you do. Well, let's just say I have a lot of sugar cravings. That's all. I like to eat sugar, um, cookies, probably. Like the other day, I literally have to like Burgers, get cake. into the store and grab a box of cookies if, if I want to eat them. So, okay, well, we just got a cake. So, um, I say think... hi, a big hello to Brenda from Facebook from oh, Canada. Yeah. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Thanks so much for all your support. Um, just really want to say. Thanks to you. Okay, so we're going to be doing our little pesto sauce. So inside our pesto, we're going to be adding some lemon oh, juice. Sorry, one more oh, yeah. question. Are you the best cook in your house? Are you the best cook in your house? I am totally the best cook in my house. No offense, Mom. No it's offense. to the truth. He is no the best offense. cook. He is. Even though I've only been cooking for two years, the dishes I come up with are pretty darn good. So no, no offense to my mom or to, or to my dad, but... I'm, I'm a pretty good cook. <laughs> Alright, so we're just going to add in our lemon juice. The reason why I'm holding out my hand is because I don't want the seeds. Alright, just a little, a little bit more. Now this is going to add a little kind of bright acidity flavor to it, and it's going to be so good. I mean, any classic pesto has to have some sort of citrus inside it. 
Okay, so to add to that, um, what am I missing? Oh yes, our pine nuts. So I'm gonna be adding our pine nuts right in. Now if you guys don't have pine nuts, I actually made a walnut gruyere cheese pesto inside one of my recipes. So you guys can sub these for some almonds or walnuts or any kind of nuts you guys have. One person know, what's the green stuff? What's the green stuff? This is actually arugula, like I said, not a very typical uh, green for, for doing a pesto, but it's really, really good. So now this is going to kind of be the, the noisy part. And now this is going to be kind of tricky just because it shrinks to like nothing and it's hard to make sure that you get a good blade. But nothing beats that really smooth. My son is allergic. Can I use almonds? My son is allergic. You can use almonds. Yeah, de yeah, like definitely. You can use any type of nuts you want. Walnuts, pecans, uh, almonds. So definitely kind of sub, uh, like if you don't want to buy the pine nuts, or if you're allergic, definitely sub them out for like, like I said, almonds, walnuts, or pecans. They're really, really good. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of pulse this. Now this is going to so be really, really noisy. So I'm going to ask a question. I want to start cooking, thanks to you, but I can't find a non-pricey culinary tool. What do you think I should do? Just follow that. Um, you can't you too? find... Yeah, well, I actually have a bunch of good recipes on my YouTube. I have a 10-minute chocolate mousse, and I have a bunch of other YouTube videos that I'm still into the process of editing and stuff. It's YouTube. Yeah, just really just try and follow me on my YouTube. You guys can check these out. Now, I know chicken roulade, pomegranate reduction, such fancy words, but literally it's so easy. I mean, the pomegranate reduction is literally just taking pomegranate juice and a little bit of balsamic and reducing it until it gets a little syrupy. I mean, it's really, really easy. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys could like, I mean, you guys are. So follow me and said, but I really want you guys to try cooking these dishes. I mean, they're really, really awesome. So delicious and easy to make. Can you All make right. desserts? Can and desserts? can you use? I can use cashews. I mean, I've never, I've never tried cashews. Cashew. No, I actually have tried cashews in a pesto before. So yeah, well, like I said, cashews, walnuts, pecans, almonds, probably a few more that I made, but definitely just try that out. All right, so I'm just going to pulse this until it's nice and smooth. Apologize for the noise. Can you have a cook-along so that you can give the recipe early and they can cook with you? Can you have a cook-along so we can cook with you? Um, I actually did that once, and I'd be more than happy to do it for you guys again. Um, I'll try that for my next Periscope, or... One after, probably. Yeah, probably the one after, because we're going to be really busy. This week, like, yeah. Yeah, this week I have, like, three interviews or something with ce with celebrity chefs for you, a marketing one, and then... Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you guys. Um, you guys got to go to YouTube and type in She Scouts. I, I think it was, right? Yep. Yeah. And I actually just did a video for a new series, Little Kids Big Careers, and that's an amazing show. I just did the interview. They just posted it on YouTube. So all you guys out there, definitely, you guys have to check that out. It's going to be really, really awesome. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drizzle in my peanut oil right in. Now you could use grapeseed, olive oil. I prefer a little peanut oil. All right. One person asks, what liquids were in the pesto, just lemon juice? Uh, yeah, for now for the pesto, it was just arugula, pine nuts, and lemon juice. Now the actual base of the sauce is going to be the oil. All right, so now I took my lid off, and now we're just going to turn this drizzle in your lemon. Very nice and slowly until it combines. Keep it going. All right, so now what I'm going to do is just going to turn that up a notch. See, this is the thing about a tricky, about doing this inside the blender, unless you have like a bunch of, of the mixture that you're going to make, it always just gets kind of stuck around the sides, and there's not enough for the blade to actually kind of really do it. Can I show them? Yeah. yeah. Here, that'd be better. <laughs> All right, so when that happens, you want to take your spatula, kind of work it around the sides, move it around, and then just add more oil. Do you get intense taste of peanut in the pesto? You get an intense taste of peanut in the pesto. No, it's actually why I use the peanut oil, because I find that when I use olive oil, it has like this really kind of strong flavor to it. So that's why I prefer to use peanut oil or oil. You actually don't even taste the peanut at all. So that's why I, I use that. All right, so I'm just going to add in more oil. 
just to kind of get that all in. It's a very, very slow drizzle bottle. All right, let me turn that back on. Oh. And just add in a little bit of I apologize for the noise. All right, one sec. All right, that should be good. How about coconut oil? Coconut oil. Um, coconut oil should work. I mean, I've never tried with it, but yeah, it definitely. Yeah, it could be a little coconutty, and it could seize up just because coconut oil tends to seize up. But I mean, you guys definitely gotta try that out. All right, so I'm gonna turn that back on just for a second. All So thanks to JVC and Sharon S. Thank you so much. Maybe 50 likes each. More. Oh, more. Come on. Thanks so much, guys. All right. So our pesto sauce is done. Take a look. Take a look. Mmm, that's so good. See, that's why you have to use a blender because it makes sure that it gets it nice and smooth. I apologize for all the noise, but it's so worth it. So I'm going to scrape the sides and just move that around. All right. That's done. I'm going to set this aside, and we're actually just going to be starting up our chicken now. Okay, before we do that, oh yeah, we still last time on our... Okay, so to add to, oh, before we do that, we actually have to add our little cream to our mushrooms and onions. So to add to our mushrooms and onions, I'm going to be chopping up a little bit of some fresh parsley, and then we're also going to be doing... Um, a little bit of lemon zest and lemon juice. What is your favorite recipe? What is my favorite recipe? Um, in terms of one of mine, or I'm not really sure. I mean, I like all of my recipes, and I'm I, I'm actually not too sure. I'll get back to you. All right. So just kind of quickly chop that up. It's all ready to go. Just a little bit more of this, and then we'll get. Now, you don't want to use too much parsley because it has really, really strong flavor, but just enough to kind of give it that really nice, fresh flavor. Will you make a cookbook? Will you make a cookbook? I'm actually in the process of making one. I have a bunch of recipes written down. So, yeah, I actually will be making a cookbook. All right. Make some parsley. Just a little bit more. And then to add to that, we're going to be doing a little bit of some lemon zest. Just going to kind of get that off. A little bit more. Somebody says they want a signed cookbook. They want a signed cookbook. Um, when the cookbook comes out, now I'm sure. Yeah, I'm, we can do that. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to do that. Just be lucky someone's buying your cookbook. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I mean, look. All right, so I'm just going to kind of clean my workstation a bit. And this is our filling, a little bit of lemon zest, sauteed onions, uh, mushrooms, our little parsley, and that's good to go. All right, so that's good. And before we start uh, wrapping up our chicken, I'm going to be doing our cheese. So here I have a beautiful block a fancy Gruyere cheese, and it's so good. So what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to cut the sides off this. What is your favorite meat to eat? Before? What is your favorite to cook? Meat Sorry. To cook? Um, probably a nice steak. I absolutely love steak, so I love cooking them. All right, so I'm going to trim, should I trim the ends off? Yeah, because of the rind. I need a nice big slice. So I'm going to take the rim off of that. And now, I actually have a cool thing. For the excess rims, what you can do is throw them inside your meat sauce or bolognese sauce, and I'll add a beau, or what you could do is put them inside your pasta water, and it's going to add a really nice kind of flavor to them, it'll be really good. Or like if you're making risotto, you could add them inside your sock, just to kind of give it that nice little twist. What is right. the best, uh, sorry, I missed that on you now, what is the best? Uh, what's uh, the best oil to cook with? What's the best oil to cook with? Um... To be honest, I prefer peanut oil, but I also like grapeseed oil. The reason why I don't use olive oil is because it has a really high smoke point, which means that at a certain temperature, it'll start to become carcinogenic, a.k.a. poison. One sec. Can you do a vegetarian dish? 
can you do a veggie a veggie a veggie dish yeah a veggie dish yeah I actually have few veggie dishes that I will be doing soon so definitely will do that all right setting that aside and I'm just gonna kind of thin this one out a little bit because it's a little thick you can talk about your recipe that's in the TV food chat oh yeah um food TV and TV food diva chat foodies. diva foodies yeah, yeah diva foodies on their website. They put for Valentine's Day. They posted one of my recipes. Will be or no, will be posted, and it's a delicious pea ravioli with uh, a little fancy tomato sauce, and there's a sage butter sauce, and then some crispy can onion, which is so good. I mean, it's literally to die for. So definitely go and check them out. Sharon right. gave you more likes. You better thank, thank Sharon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharon. I really, really appreciate. Everyone's support. Um, I could not be more thankful, and I could not do this without you guys. All right. So I have my beautiful pounded out little chicken, and then I'm just gonna kind of take that off the saran wrap. I actually forgot to do this. For the saran wrap, you want to uh, take a little damp paper towel and just kind of put that around, just so it doesn't stick to the chicken too much like this. See, it's completely stuck. Oh, one sec. I'm gonna get this out. I'm gonna get it out. All right, there we go. Oh, and there's our beautiful chicken. Is that coming out? Yeah, it's perfect. All right, come on. Boom. There it is. Show them. Yep. How do you stuff the mushrooms in the meat? How do you stuff the mushrooms in the meat? I'm actually gonna be showing you guys that right now, and it is pretty, pretty cool. All right, so as usual, I'm just gonna get my gloves on because I don't want to waste too much time. Because if I were to not use gloves, I'd probably be washing my hands about a thousand times. Um, How talented is Ta is Kaya? How oh, talented is Kaya? Ka Kaya is really, really awesome. I mean, she's an amazing cook, especially for her age. So she's really good. All right. So I'm just going to be putting our slice of our cheese. I'm going to say thanks to Jamie C. Him and Sharon are having a fight, which is a good one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, guys. All right. So just gonna oh that's too much cheese. All right, whenever you contaminate something, do not use it. All right, that's going in. I'm gonna grab my mixture, beautiful mixture. I'm just kind of spread that around, like, kind of like a pate. Yeah, I didn't get that macaroon question. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, I always remember Alexander used macaroons. Have you ever made them before? Or are you more a chef than a baker? Uh, have you ever? Uh, I always remember Alexander's macaroons. Have you ever made them? And are you more deaf than a baker? Um, I actually make macaroons. I have some in the fridge, I believe, which I yeah. still take a picture of, which I haven't done yet. So, And um, I consider myself a chef and a baker, but I think that my sweet, sorry, that I think that my savory is just a little better than my sweet. Sharon gave you another 400 likes. Say thank 400 you. 400 likes? What the heck? Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you. All right, before we do that, I think our cauliflower is done. All right, take a quick look. All right, so it's a little brown. It's nice and tender. That is good to go. All right, so I'm going to take this out. And Somebody says you didn't finish the macaroons. Our next week's episode is lots of laugh. Somebody didn't finish them. Oh, yeah, I, I showed them last week, too, so I haven't finished them yet. I actually still have to take a picture of them, which I haven't got done. All right, so that's going to be cooling, and now we're going to be stuffing our chicken. Have you cooked something sous vide? Have you cooked something sous vide? Um, no, I actually want, I actually get, uh, I actually want to sous vide something. I know there's a sous vide machine, but I don't have one. Hem, hem. <coughs> that was actually my throat. That was actually my throat. My throat gets really, really sore. I don't know why. Do you always cook with fresh ingredients? You always cook with fresh ingredients. Yeah, everything I try to do, try to keep it as fresh and delicious as possible. All right, so I'm going to be rolling up my chicken. Now, filling is going to gush out of side, so don't worry. Kind of tightly, tightly, tightly roll that up. See, here, I'm going to come this way. Yeah. All right, so that kind of gushed out, but you know what? That is totally fine. Oh, question. Will you be trying to make the pork ears again? We will be trying to make the pork ears again. I mean, pork ears are so delicious, guys. I mean, who, who would want to eat them? No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to be. I am never touching those guys again. Never, ever. Oh. 
Another question. If you from Max B, if you could with any master key you're consistent from season one, two, or three, who would it be? If I could cook from any master chef junior season from one, two, and three, who would it be? Um, I don't know. I, I'd really like to meet and cook with all of them, so they're all really, really amazing. All right, so for this, we're going to tie it, uh, make sure I get under. So I have my kitchen twine, and we're just going to be tying with three strings. So two on the outs, and then one right in the middle. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is just so that way it doesn't gush too much out of the side. And uh, you don't want to tie too tight, so that way it kind of like shrivels up the chicken, but not too loose. All right. Um, what is the hardest challenge in MasterChef? And what was your cheese dish? What was your hard, what was the hardest challenge in MasterChef? And what was your cheese dish? Um, my cheese dish was actually, um, it, it was actually, what was it? It was a uh, fresh pasta with Alfredo. Not now. That wasn't not my best dish, but I was actually gonna be doing a souffle, but then I realized that it would deflate all that stuff, so I had to kind of do like a last minute plan. But it still turned out okay. But it was, but it was good. All right. So this one I tied just a little tighter there, and I'm probably wondering, oh, then how do you get the the kitchen twine off after you're done cooking? So basically, after we sear it, we baste it, and then we and then we'll bake it. Um, well, what we're going to be doing is just going to let it rest and then using just a pair of scissors, just kind of cut them off. Sharon says she's never, be, she, she's, uh, would never be able to do that. I uh, just got a statement from Sharon. She would never be able to do that. I know this looks really fancy and all this stuff, but it actually isn't. It's really, really easy. I mean, a like tying shoelace. Yeah, it's just like a tying shoelace, basically. Sharon gave you another 400 likes. 400 likes? <laughs> You're joking. Alright, what is this a string? This what? is kitchen twine. Yeah, kitchen twine. Sorry? Or butcher's twine either. Yeah, twine. yeah, yeah. 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 Kitchen twine or butcher's twine, anything. This was basically the only one I could find. So oh. I'm just going to tie those up. What's yep. something you cooked other than pig ears that you thought was gross, uh, like liver? What's something you cooked other than pig ears that you thought was gross? Um. Nothing really. I mean, I've cooked liver before, which actually is kind of, it actually tastes pretty good. Other than that, nothing really that was disgusting as pig ear. Can I see that? So yep. Sure then. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut that little piece of cheese. How did it feel to get soaked by a giant lemonade balloon? How did it feel? And to how did soaked? you get dry? Yeah. How did it feel to be soaked by a giant lemonade balloon? First of all, the lemonade was extremely cold and was not pleasant at all. And how I dried off, I just kind of got a towel and dried off. What was your marshmallow dish in episode one? What was my marshmallow dish in episode one? My marshmallow dish was actually my almond was actually an almond tort with a marshmallow Italian meringue. How did you use the marshmallow? How did you use the marshmallow? Um, I actually oh one sec guys. I didn't tie that one right, but that's okay. That's why I have extra time. And sorry, what was the question? How did you use the marshmallow? Did you just put them on top, or what did you do with it? Um, no, for the marshmallow, what I did is I melted it down with uh, some milk. And a typical Italian meringue is when you make a simple sugar that's boiling, when you put that inside the meringue. I thought that would work, and it actually, let's just say my plan backfired, so I had to redo it, but it ended up working, so that's good. All right. So I'm just going to put on another pair of gloves. I mean, it's a good thing I have, like, a billion gloves. <laughs> All right. Questions. Since I didn't tie that one right. Yeah. Okay, I have to ask. I mentioned it on Facebook, but how horrible was it when JD dropped the venison on Chef's foot and shoe? Um, how horrible was it when JJ dropped the venison on Gordon and his foot? I didn't even know. I, I honestly didn't even know that really happened until later. Cause I didn't hear it at all, so I don't. I'm not. I don't know the details about that. Yeah, the kids were the two teams were actually separated by a wall, so the red team and the blue team yeah. did not see what the other team was doing. Yeah, that's true. All right, so you know, what? I'm just gonna do one quick cut that no one saw. Boom. And now I'm gonna tie that up. All right there. One sec, sorry guys. It's like hard to tie these with my little gloves on. I have butterfingers. 
There we go, guys. There we go. All right. Sorry about that. It was like a little interruption. There we go. All right. So now what I'm going to do is just cut that off now. One sec. Just to make it look pretty. Sharon gave you another 400 likes. Wow. Better say thank you. Where are these coming from, guys? I mean, thank you so much, Sharon. I really, really appreciate it. Your support and Jamie, I mean, I really appreciate all of you guys' support. I would not be able to do this without you. All right, let's. Do you want to zoom in on this? Let's take sure. That. All right, beautiful, nice, and like I said, we're going to be taking this out after we uh, after it's nice and rested, sure. and that's good to go. All right, so I'm going to set that aside here. So I'm just going to move this around, and then we're actually just going to start cooking up our. Thing. One sec. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat my pan uh, medium to high heat. And now we're just going to kind of let that heat up for now. But while that's happening, we're, we're going to be getting our pot flow reduction ready. Jamie gave you another 400 likes. Wow. 400 likes is like a competition, but I've been in a good way. So thank you guys so much. All right, I'm just going to grab my ball stop here. Which I completely forgot to get off the Last question. Um, is there any cooking supplies you recommend? Is there any cooking supplies that you recommend? Um, some of the kitchen supplies that I absolutely cannot live without are my knives, um, a blender, and probably a stand mixer, but that's kind of... So that I would recommend probably just to get yourself a nice blender, definitely some nice uh, stainless steel pots or non-stick pots, whatever you prefer. And really, I love having a good, nice pair of sharp knives. So that's probably my favorite. All right, so I'm gonna add in my palm juice. Now actually, now usually when I first made this, I had pomegranates and I made my own juices, blended them, I strained them, did all that. But for some reason, I can't find them. Or I couldn't find them today. But that's okay. So here I have just palm juice, which, believe it or not, a while ago, I, I, I'll I, be honest, I don't like pomegranate juice. But the reduction tastes really, really good. All right, so now to add to that. Yeah, that's sticking in on the line. It's fine. Uh, Luke's laughing. Gave you 500 likes on Periscope. They don't count. Likes? They don't count. No. He's joking. Oh, okay, okay, all right. All right, so I'm just going to add in a little bit of balsamic vinegar, ala modena, I think. <laughs> and that's good to go. And I'm not going to start reducing that now, because it's kind of like a last minute thing. It literally, yeah, I actually got to tell you, when I was using my dryer on today, I literally let it do too much. Oh, one sec. And then it kind of turned rock hard into a candy, basically. And it was really, really funny. So I'm like, hey, I made candy unintentionally, but I'm going to watch this. So I'm not going to let it reduce now. Oh, our pan popped. All right, so I'm going to add our oil in, and then one sec. Please do not do it, I'm carrying, carrying a hot pan of oil in, but I have to. And just going to add our chicken right in. What inspired you to do these broadcasts? What inspired you to do these broadcasts? Um, I actually want to have my own uh, cooking show, and it's, so that's kind of why. I did this, you know, I just really wanted to share my love cooking with you guys and absolutely love doing this, so I thought it was a really good idea. So now we're going to be doing just searing this on all sides, so that's ready to go. Yep, that's almost good. I'm just going to add a little bit more oil into that. Get that nice and nice and seared up. All right, that's good. Move on to the next side. And continue to let that cook up until you get a nice golden brown color on each little side. Now I know it's a little tricky since it's like a round shape, but that's okay. Luke wants to know if he does a cooking periscope that you use during him. Uh, Luke wants to know if he does a cooking periscope before I join. I mean, hell yeah, I'll join. I mean, I really want you guys just to get inside the kitchen and do these Luke cooks. He's in culinary class, high school. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, 
if you guys are going to do it, let me know. I'm more than happy to pop in and say hi. I mean, it's really, really cool. I mean, Jamie it's... says it looks yummy. Sorry? That's Jamie right. said it looks yummy. looks yummy. Yeah, this actually is so good. This melts and kind of weird cheese and the filling. It's literally to die for. So just continue to sear that up so that's almost ready to go. Almost there. Right, this is the sear that up. And then after once it's done searing, what we're going to do, turn the temp off. Then we're just going to base that with some crushed garlic and butter. Almost done, guys. Sorry, I don't know why it's taking so long. Careful, I don't want you to get burned. Oh, yeah. Almost done. And now we're actually just going to be searing. See, see that's how raw chicken there. So what we're going to do is just going to grab that and see the top. It looks so good. From this thing. It does look good. Jamie gave you another 400 likes. Awesome. Where are these coming from? Seriously. Alright, so we're just going to see off the other side. Jamie gave you likes last time too. Yeah, I know. He gave me a lot of likes. So big shout out to you guys. Alright, so that's done. Turn the temp off. This one is on. And now we're going to grab a big knob of butter. And then I'll go. With that, that's garlic? Yep, our crushed garlic. And now I'm just going to completely just toss that around. And just it. Are you basting it? Uh, yeah, I'm actually just going to be basting that. Usually it won't fall down like that, but that's okay. Just continue to base it till, till the butter turns to, like, till the butter starts to turn a really dark brown. Sharon is and drooling. Sharon is drooling, yeah. It's so good. Alright, just continue. Oh my god. Katie Jamie. says hi. Say hi to Katie. Hi, Katie. Kathy, sorry, Katty. Kathy. Kathy, yeah. Uh, Jamie goes to Sharon. Sheesh. <laughs> oh, I, I'm gonna stay out of this one. Okay. All right, just continue to base that up. Almost ready to go. And are you going to fry? Why are you frying it? Why are you not putting it into the oven? Why are you frying it or not putting it into the oven? So basically what this is, I'm not actually frying it, even though it looks like a lot of oil. That's how a typical basting is, where you take butter and then you base it over. So this is what I do for basically all my proteins. I sear it on all sides. I baste it, and then I cook it into the oven. Alright, so now that's done. And put that inside my little thing here. And then now we're gonna be cooking this baby inside the oven for about six to eight minutes. Now the reason why it's so long is because it's rolled up and there's filling inside. And right in. Now just cook that for about eight minutes. And if it needs more, that's no worries. What? Eight seconds? Look. Oh, wow. No worries. Eight minutes. There we go. All right. So now we're just, what we're going to do is we're going to turn our reduction on. So our reduction is going to go, yep. Let me move that there. Our reduction is going to go on medium heat. And just going to move that here. And now you have to keep a really good eye on this because it will literally reduce like that. So, all right, now I actually have my heated oil, so we're going to be doing our fry little wontons. So I'm now, saying, does the amount of the time change if you have more of these rolls in the oven? Does the amount of time change when you have more of these in the oven? Um, no, it, sh it actually shouldn't unless you have them like really, really crowded. I would try to make sure that whenever you're cooking something, especially, uh, like, like, let's say you're frying, you don't want to crowd the pan too much, because it will drop the temperature of the oil and it won't get uh, too, and it won't get that, that nice kind of golden brown color. So if you were to cook like five, six, seven, eight of these, no, the cooking time would not change. Jamie, right. so you gave you another 400 likes. 400 likes, oh my god. Oh, one person asked, what are you cooking and did you do this on MasterChef? What are you cooking and did you do this on MasterChef? Um, I'm cooking a chicken roulade with an arugula pesto, we have our uh, our fried one tom shirts, roasted cauliflower, oh, and, and I actually never did this on Master Chef Junior. 
So what we're going to be doing is just getting like a nice seat. Just take a look like right about there. And just kind of press down just to make sure that it gets like an, like it's a strip. So, oh, I already cut more than that, but that's good. All right. And what are, what are these? Uh, these are actually just wonton uh, strips or oh, just wraps. You know, no, wonton wraps, but I'm cutting them in strips. Now you, you know, usually find these inside the produce sh uh, section of the uh, grocery store. All right. So Sharon and Jamie food. are having a little tipple, so it's great. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. All right. I want to say bye to Grace. She oh, yeah. has to go. Bye, she Grace. Thank back. you so much for, for tuning in. All right. So I turned, so my oil has been simmering there just to kind of keep it hot. And then I'm going to turn the heat up to medium high heat. And then I'm going to grab my wontons and just, here. What do you want to put them Yep. And just kind of put them in one by one. And that's cooking up nice. Now you don't need too many of those dishes, but always just to cook a little bit more. I just kind of pick out which one you like. Alright, that's good. Now, now you look where I said about frying, you want to fry the pan. See, that's not really crowding it too much. And the reason why you don't want to crowd it is because, like I said, it'll drop the temperature of the oil. Emily says she's giving you lots of hearts. Is that water or oil? This is actually oil. So now you just want to cook these up to a really nice golden brown. And that's starting to cook up. We still have about five minutes on our reduction. And everything is looking scrumptious. I mean, it smells amazing here. It's so delicious. So I'm just going to kind of toss it around. But while that's happening, I can't believe I forgot this. This is like probably a really, 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 really important news. This February, on the 27th, I'm going to be doing a live cooking demo and a meet and greet at Williams Sonoma in Orlando at the Mall at Millennia. That sounds weird, but, that, but it's, that's how it is. Orlando, February 22nd, 1 or 2 p.m., is it? Uh, Laura says she's going to tune in next Monday, so thank you to Laura. So thank you so much. All right, so I'm going to quickly give you more info on that. Before I do that, our wonton strips are done. Nice golden brown. Put them inside our little bowl. And now right away, whenever you're frying something, what you want to do is grab some salt and season them right away because there's still oil on these. So what it's going to do is the oil is going to absorb and it's going to stick to the oil, which is going to stick onto our wonton. All right, that's good to go. And then I'm actually just going to grab our cauliflower from there. Grace started following you. Say hi, Grace. Hi, Grace. Thank you so much. All right. So grabbing my cauliflower right now. One second. All right. Now, like I said, this is so good. Mm. It's so delicious. All right. Why do I always take big bites? <laughs> Alright, so our reduction is Somebody delicious. wants to marry you and so that you can cook for them. So like I said, our reduction is reducing. And uh, like I said, it's on medium heat. You just want to let that reduce till it doesn't it doesn't like start to get all bubbly, but then just how it thickens up just a little bit. And we're pretty much just waiting around, but you know what? I'm just going to kind of get the rest of our plating going, actually. So I have my beautiful... Okay, you can follow it. All right. So I have my beautiful kind of pesto. In the light, buddy. Yep. And then I'm going to grab my plate. And now what we're going to do is we're going to be doing a little brush of our pesto. So to make sure I don't sway off, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this, just so that way I know kind of where to go like that. I'm going to kind of clean off my plate. Greetings from the UK. Matthew says hi. Hi, and Matthew. All the way from UK. Whoa, UK, that's pretty cool. All right. Wait, that's really early. Aren't you? It's no, late in the US, US, right? No, it's uh, probably it's afternoon now. It's an afternoon oh, now. Oh, okay. Now it's like, I think, 6 o'clock there. 
All right, so I'm just going to be grabbing our pesto. Luke's getting an award. Say congrats to Luke. Thank you. Or sorry, congrats, Luke. Um, I don't know what the award is, but as long as you con congrats. <laughs> Stuttering on the words again. You're doing good. I just don't know. Like, like sometimes I just don't know how to explain it to you guys, and I, I apologize about that. All right, so we have that going. A nice straight line. Grab it a little more. It's 1 a.m. in the yeah. UK. Oh Whoa. Yeah, I, I knew it. I told you it was really late. Oh, yeah, it is. Elias says he gives you lots of heart, as did Kathy, so tell him thank you. Thank you so much, Elias and Kathy. All right, so I'm just going to kind of add a little bit more pesto. And oh, I made a little mess, but that's all right. We'll wipe that off. Really kind of just get in there and just brush it. Add it a little bit more because this stuff is so good. All right, uh, one second. Can you say hi, Olivia? Hi, Olivia. Here, do it again so she can right. see. Hi, Olivia. All right, so what I'm gonna, oh, oh my God, I almost forgot. Nope, so good. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my paper towel and then right up there. And, well, no, that didn't work. Okay, can you say okay. hi, Macy? Hi, Macy. All right, and so, then try to see my name, Tegan, I think it is. Sorry? Say Tegan. Hi, Tegan. Oh, are you Say hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. All right, so we made our beautiful little brush. Now let's take a look at this chicken. Oh, look at that. All right. All right, now usually you see me do this a lot. I feel the chicken weather. Yep, that's done. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna put that in for another two minutes, just to be on the safe side. And the reduction is good. Yep, well, it's good to go. All right, that needs about another four seconds. All right, so we're gonna continue our little plating. Um, no, we're actually gonna take a hold up on our plating. Can just take a look at that. Have a nice, beautiful little brush of our pesto. Then these are just so good. Really good. Now you may find these on Asian salads a lot, and they're absolutely to die for. They're probably better than like um, a chip, I think. Yeah, I mean, these are really healthy. They're really delicious. And the wonton strips I got were, like I said, bigger when I cut them. So what you could do is saute some cabbage, onions, carrot, and fold them over with egg wash and fry them. So they'd be really good. I have to take a look at this. Put you in this one. So it's still kind of liquid and you need to reduce just a little bit more. And now, as usual, we're waiting. So questions. Yeah, you guys got any questions? Chirp, chirp. Oh, the, the William Sonoma. Yeah, so like I said, I'm having a meet and greet at William Sonoma in Orlando, Florida at the mall at Millennia. Inside the William Sonoma store at February 27th. I'm not sure if it was 1 or 2 p.m. It's 1. Yeah, it's at 1. And I'm not sure how long it'll last, but for those of you guys that are in Florida, you guys got to, to come and check that out on February 27th. I'm also going to be... <laughs> I'm also going to be doing two dishes, a tomato soup, and then also a beautiful steak dish. So definitely come and check that out. Okay, okay. there are a bunch of questions. How can you tell if it's completely done inside without, without, uh, with other than it being white and side and not pink without using a thermometer? Um, how do you tell if the chicken's done without using a thermometer? I don't know. I kind of just kind of like feel it with my finger. If it's still really bouncy, then you know that it's not done. But but if you kind of feel like a layer kind of still and then it's a little bouncy, then it should be done. Okay, a bunch of questions. How old are you? Thirteen. When did you first start cooking? Two years ago. It was like speed round. How old are you? How old are you? Uh, what made you want to start cooking? Um, I got I got inspired by the first show, and then my mom and my sister really pushed me inside the kitchen. Uh, will you take a limo to the mall? We will take a limo to the mall. No. You I sit. I sit. No, no, I don't. I sit in the back seat. <laughs> Third back seat. Third back seat. Uh, okay. Do you ever watch the uh, Kids Baking Championship? Do you ever watch Kids Baking Championship? 
Uh, yeah, I've actually heard it. I haven't got a chance to watch it yet, but I have heard of it. Say hi to Max. Hi, Max. All right, so I'm going to grab my chicken out. And it's done. No! No! No, cheat, stay in there. No. All right, boys, if this happens to you, i got a cool way. Slotted head spatula. I don't know what we're going to do. As I'm just going to cut the cheese gooey. Oh! Why did you do that? I wanted all the cheese I could get. All right, so I'm going to grab my plate. And just kind of watch this. This is going to be like... Oh, oh. all right. Look at that. The cheese was literally gushing out. That, my friends, is going to be so good. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to let this rest. And then we're going to be cutting off the kitchen twine and getting all that ready. But before I forget, a reduction and keeping the full side of it. That's so good. Okay, more questions. Yep, keep. What's your favorite color. color? My favorite color is blue. Would you say you have a specialty dish? And if so, what? Would you say you have a specialty dish? And if so, what? Um, I, my specialty dish is probably an steak dish that I have on my website. Um, it's a pan-seared steak with a vodka cream sauce, a red wine reduction, parsley puree, we have seared asparagus, some veggies, and then we also have a steak. And it's so good. You're going to be making that at the meet and greet. Yeah, I'm actually going to be doing that at the meet and greet. And taste, also taste and greet. a delicious, oh uh, yeah, taste and greet. That's good. And I'm also going to be doing a tomato soup, which you guys will be able to taste too. All right. And then mm-hmm. questions? Uh, where did you get your shoes? Where did you get my shoes? They they always saw my shoes. Um, well, the reason why I'm wearing shoes usually I I usually wear like like slippers, but then during my dry run, my ankle started to hurt, so I'm still kind of limping around a little bit. So my dad told me to put on some shoes, so that's where I'm wearing my shoes right now. What's your website address? How can people get in touch with you? My website address is zach-car.com. That's Z A C dash K A R A dot com. And right inside the top panel, there's contact me. You guys can send me an email. And there's also a link to my blog, which is really, really awesome. So you guys definitely got to check that out. Hey, dude, oh, you're okay. trending now. I'm trending? Yeah, you're on the front page you wanted to oh, be. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. Take a screenshot, take a screenshot. Take a screenshot, babe. Yeah, yeah, take a screenshot. I, I missed it. I didn't get a chance. What? I'll, I'll go on the front page and take a screenshot. Yep. Yeah. So you're on trending. You're going to get lots of people. Say hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Man, that, that, that is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So let's take a look at our reduction. See, it's still kind of... You want to zoom in on this one? Sure. All right. So it's still kind of like wet, but it's thickened up a little bit. So that just needs to reduce a little bit more. But like I said, keep a hawk eye on this. Were you the kid on MasterChef Junior? Were you the kid on MasterChef Junior? Yeah, I actually was a kid. I competed on the current season of MasterChef Junior, got to the top four. So that was really, really awesome. Any other questions? Do you, oh, do you, Luke's question, do you like zucchini or cucumber? Do you love zucchini? Oh, oh, oh. Seriously, I'll be very honest. I've given zucchini a chance, but I absolutely hate it. I, I recently gave it a chance to set a salsa, and it, t- and it screwed up the whole flavor of the salsa. Okay, so I hate zucchini, but I love cucumber. A bunch of questions. Again, how old are you? Are you currently on MasterChef Junior? Um, yeah, the current season that I was on, season four, actually just finished airing, and I'm 13 years old. And um, do you have the perfect mac and cheese recipe? Do you have the perfect mac and cheese recipe? Yes, I actually do. And if you guys want it, I'll be more than happy to post it on my blog. Or so we can make it whatever they want. Or I can make it, yeah. Let me know. Yeah, just, just, just let me know. If you guys have any requests, like you guys can DM me, but preferably email, and just write a comment on my social media, and I'd be more than happy to answer. Uh, what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie. Um, well, it used to be the like like some of the Marvel movies, but then to be honest, the new Star Wars movie topped them all, so that's probably my favorite. Uh, do you have the perfect? Uh, I think it's creme brulee. Yeah, creme brulee. Yeah, I actually do have a creme brulee recipe. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I have like these. Beautiful mini creme brulees that I think they're on my website. Yep, they are. No. We don't have the recipe. I don't think so. We posted the the recipe, but we have the photo. Yeah, yeah, we we, we already edited it. We haven't posted it yet. So it's a beautiful mini creme brulee 
with some vine grapes oh, one and uh, a bunch of other stuff. And I'll, I'll definitely post that. Okay, a bunch of questions. Again, how old are you? I'm 13 years old. Do you keep in touch with any of the Master of Junior contestants or judges? Um, I keep in touch with the Master of Junior contestants. Um, we have like an iMessage group chat, so yeah, we still talk all the time. All right, I'm gonna um, quickly. One person wants you to make the uh, the um mac and cheese. And then another thing, sorry, a bunch of questions. What's the first thing you cooked? The first thing I cooked, to be honest, that was probably some scrambled eggs, and then I did steak and burgers. Somebody's asking you to marry him, her. All right, someone's asking me to marry them. Uh, our reduction is done. All right, I, I salvaged it. It was like perfect um, right now. Can, can you make go. chicken parm? Can you make chicken parm? Um, can I see the reduction? Yep. Yeah. I've made, I haven't made chicken parm before, but I know how to make it. So, how do you know it's done? Uh, see, it's reduced a lot, and that's good to go. It still has to be a what little bit. What inspired you to start cooking? What inspired me to start cooking? I got inspired by the first season of MasterChef Junior, and then my uh, my sister and my mom really pushed me to get inside the kitchen, so that's how I started cooking. Um, Was he from that cooking season? show? Yes. And yes, I am from MasterChef Junior. One sec, guys. I'm just going to grab my self a pair of scissors. All right, so now I mentioned earlier that like we, uh, we tied our chicken and kitchen twine, I said I'd be able to get it off, and it's really, really easy. All you do is grab it and go snip. What's your favorite dish to cook? My favorite dish, well, look at that cheese. My favorite dish to cook, um, I'd probably be a nice little steak. This is actually really fun to make, too. Uh, what would you say is the most iconic U.S. dish? What would you say is probably the most iconic U.S. dish? Probably definitely a burger. That's also my favorite kind of uh, American dish. I literally have them every week, no joke. Right. Do you believe in unicorns? Do you believe in unicorns? Um, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I do one in. I don't think so. What do you need to compete in MasterChef Junior? Sorry, could you, sorry, could you repeat that? What do you need to compete in MasterChef Junior? What do you like, need to how do you sign up? Uh, to, to sign up for MasterChef Junior, um, just go to MasterChefJuniorCasting.com and all you need to be a, a resident in the U.S., I think, and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. And then another question. Do you like Mexican food? Do you like Mexican food? Yes, I actually do love Mexican food. <gasps> Guys, look at that. The cheese is oozing out. Mm, that's so good. How do you so we're uh, yep. Alex wrote, I could eat 10 of those. I could eat a 10 of those. Yeah, I could too. So um, what I'm going to do, just going to trim the, I'm going to cut that into three pieces. Oh, guys, hey, we hit the jackpot, baby. Oh, come and take a look at that. Oh, look at the mushrooms and the cheese. Oh, my God, that is so, so good. Mm. How do you start if you're beginning to cook? How do you start if you're beginning to cook? Um, Well, I would really try to do something that you can enjoy doing in the kitchen. Whether, you, let's say, you like uh, sweet better, then I would try doing a sweet dish. But the really thing... About get just it's training again. Take a picture. Out. It's training again. Yeah. All right. Just gonna kind of get that in. Can you repeat what dish you're making right now? Yeah, I'm actually making a stuffed chicken roulette with a pesto. We have roasted cauliflower, a pomegranate reduction, which is done, and then lastly we have our crispy wonton. Okay. Quick fire questions. Do you like Brussels sprouts? Uh, kind of. What's your favorite drink? Uh, Fanta or orange. What's the dish that you're making? Yeah. I'm making a chicken roulette stuffed with onions, mushrooms, cheese, roasted cauliflower, arugula pesto, uh, crispy wonton strips, and a pomegranate reduction. Did you right. win? Did you win MasterChef Junior? Sadly, I did not. All right, so we're going to quickly, quickly clean this up. All right. How long does it take to film an episode of MasterChef Junior? How long does it take to film an episode of MasterChef Junior? Um. It takes it takes it takes a little time. All right, so we have our chicken done. I'm gonna move that around a bit. There we go. That's looking better. All right, so now to go to that, I'm gonna grab my cauliflower. Just kind of pick apart which pieces I want. All right, let's see where we should put this. What place did you get in? What place did you get in? Um, I ended up getting in. Do the other Do the do the other the yellow, but I turn it on the other one. Sure. That's it. That's it. That's the way. All right. Thank you. 
So I'm going to put one right about there. I'm going to, let's see, I'll put another one here. Yep, and one more. Picking out which one I want. Right there. All right. So we have our little chicken down there. Sharon's back. Say hi. I think she had to reload her oh, connection. Hi, Sharon. Thanks. Just tell her it'll be loaded up on YouTube. Yeah, it actually will. It should be broadcasting to YouTube. And, and we'll load it up. And this whole thing to YouTube later. All right. So I'm going to grab. And she gave me another 400 likes. 400 likes? Like, come on, guys. Thank you so much, Sharon. I really appreciate this. Will the recipe be posted somewhere? Will the recipe be posted somewhere? Yeah. I'm literally updating. This is going to be posted tomorrow. T tomorrow on my blog. And to get to my blog, you got to check out my website, zach-car.com. On the, on the menu bar, I'll show a blog. Just click that link. And then this is where the recipe will Jamie, be. Jamie, give you another 500, 400 likes. Oh, 400 likes. Thank you guys so much. I don't even, I have no ways to describe this. All right, so for our let me get there, chicken, right. yeah, I have my cute little squeezy tube, and I'm just gonna kind of suck all of this up. I'm just gonna get a little bit out. Are you sad, Graham left? Are you sad, Graham left? Um, Jamie gave you 400 likes. Sharon gave you 400 likes. Oh I can't keep God. up with them. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. All right, so what I'm gonna do is uh, let's put one. You know, I'm going to put on the wonton strips first. Yeah. I think that would be better. A better way to go. Put one there. I get a little smaller one and put it right about there. And last one. Uh, oh, what happened to Graham? What happened to Graham? Uh, I think Graham is no longer going to be a judge on MasterChef or MasterChef Junior. All right, all right, all right. So now we're gonna be doing, I have my reduction. So I'm gonna put one right about there. Another one here. Oh, I'm gonna move this up and put that right there. And last one right there. Beautiful. All right, so now what we're gonna be topping our dish off with, I have some micro, Micro kale, broccoli, and kohlrabi. Now, I usually try to get whatever kind of micro dishes I can get my hands on, but this just happens to be what I need dad's All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this one. Or dad's ball. All right, so I'm just going to put it in the oven. There. And last but not least, there. I'm just gonna move aside my cutting board just so you guys can see this a little bit better. Take a picture. Yep. I'm super impressed. Yeah, I'll get take another view of that. I'm super impressed. Thanks. All right. So I'm just gonna be taking a quick picture from our social media. Right, also, I'm so this. ashamed of my cooking ability now. I'm so ashamed of my cooking ability now. Um, well, you know, the thing is, like, you guys can do this. I mean, this looks really complicated, but, I mean, it's just really plating. I mean, you could make anything look like this. I mean, but it actually isn't that hard. I mean, you guys saw it. It, didn't, it wasn't that hard. All right. So I'm going to take a few pictures. Hopefully they're good. So I can't make that. So no, I can't make that. My, my my words of advice to say that, just really get in the kitchen and try it. And I mean, what's the worst thing that's gonna happen? I mean, it doesn't turn out right. I mean, this is what I really want you guys to do. Just really get into the kitchen, start cooking. And if something doesn't happen, I'll be honest, I've had a lot of fails in the kitchen. But what's really brought me back up is my is an ability to change and improve and just really keep getting into the kitchen. So you guys say you can't make this, well, say you can. Because if you say you will, then you will end up making it. So just really try to get into the kitchen. I'm going to take my last few photos. Hopefully they're good. Oh, it's 100 viewers. 100 viewers? Wow. That's awesome. That That's amazing. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. All right, my last picture. And one more. What's the dish? While you're taking a photo. 
Uh, what's the dish? This is actually a stuffed. Here, I'll just take a picture yeah. of it again. It's a chicken roulade stuffed with sauteed onions, mushrooms, and Gruyere cheese. A arugula pesto with roasted cauliflower, a pomegranate reduction, and crispy wonton strips. I think I'm gonna have to dig into this. Do I have to grab a quick? Whoops, I forgot one. Oh, Zach, you have uh, 2,000, oh my god, 2,000, uh, sorry, 2,800 likes. What? On oh you god, now. No. What? Oh my god, I'm reading this wrong. 25,000. I'm excited. 25,000 likes. Almost 30,000 likes. I'm getting way too excited. 28,000, 26,000. <laughs> oh, you guys are such jokers. Better change yeah. that. Better change that. Get a new phone. Yeah. Oh, what I have to know, um, have you ever made egg rolls from scratch? Have you ever made egg rolls from scratch? Yeah, like, well, one day we had like this all leftover cabbage mixture that I make. So I ended up making like my homemade egg roll. It's pretty simple, just water and flour, I believe, but I'm not too sure, but I think that's it. But you should just search for recipe online and you should. You better thank uh, Jamie and Sharon for all those thank likes. Thank you so much, Jamie and Sharon, for all those likes. I really, really appreciate your guys' support, and I appreciate everyone's with a big shout out to you guys. All right, let's begin. Oh, someone wants to know who's gonna eat it. Who's gonna eat it? I'm gonna be eating all of this dish. Even though I'll only take like a teeny bit of it, I'll turn, I'll be gobbling down this like cookie monster and his cookies. Uh, Emily says she gave you 15,000 hearts in the Periscope. 15,000 hearts? Yeah. On the Periscope, thank you so much. Big shout out to you, Emily. And yeah, um, yeah, did you just like, uh, check out, uh, em Emily's Kitchen Asium on YouTube. Just definitely check that out. It's, it's a pretty, she does some pretty cool stuff. So just search her up on YouTube, Emily's Kitchen Asium. And also, like I said, uh, type in She Scouts and they have a new series, Little Kids Big Careers. And so definitely, you guys gotta definitely check them out. Alright, now, now I'm gonna be doing Oh, yeah. Before I eat my work of art, I have to tell you about my meet and greet, which I said. So, on February 27th at 1 p.m., I'm gonna be doing a live cooking demo with the steak dish and tomato soup. And it'll also be kind of like a meet and greet cook, cooking live demo thing. And it's going to be at William Sonoma at the Mall on Millennium, February 27th at 7, sorry, at 1 p.m. Could somebody on you now just repeat their question, please? Yeah, I'm just messaging. Okay. Uh, how often do you do this? How often do you do this? Um, every, every Monday now, so every week, I do my live cooking show at 7 p.m. every Monday. So if you guys could continue Eastern. again. Uh, yeah. Eastern time. So if you guys could tune in again, I'd be so, so happy. Like I said, I would not be able to do any of this without you guys, with all your guys' constant support. So I'm really, really thankful, and I could not be more happy that you guys continue to tune in. One more question. Sorry. One more question. One more question. Can you just shout out your YouTube channel and website again? Yes. So basically, um, on my website, I have all the links to social media, YouTube, my blog. And to get to that, it's my website, zach-kara.com, z-a-c-k-a-r-a.com. And for all my social media ha handles, it's always the same, Zach underscore Kara. And for the YouTube, just type in Zach Kara. And a bunch of questions, yeah. sorry. All right, no is worries. your reduction strong? Is that why, because you so little, I was just wondering, never tried one. Is your reduction strong? And that's why you use so little. Typically, like if you were to make a balsamic reduction, it would be very, 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 very pungent. And this, I don't want too much of it. It's just kind of like a little, what it's gonna do, it's gonna add a little color, but it's also for presentation too. So you could add more if you like. It also depends on how, on how much your palette can take or what your palette likes. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, the pesto too. It's a really had it has a really bright kind of acidic flavor. So I typically like a lot of pesto. Sometimes you guys might not like more or less. It all kind of depends. All right, I'm gonna dig into this. All right, take a look. Oh yeah, look at that. Close right Nicely cooked it. chicken. I'm gonna grab a small little bite. Let me also have our cauliflower. I seriously cannot tell you how good that is. There's no way to describe it unless you taste it. Seriously. 
Oh, one person wrote, I'm planning on trying and making one of your recipes for my family tonight on our special dinner night. Oh, I'm just gonna... Jake. Uh, Jake just said, I'm planning to make one of your recipes tonight as our special dinner night. Yes, um, you guys definitely gotta try one of my recipes. I mean, I'm sorry I couldn't do this one, but I'll be posting it to my blog later. I mean, I already have some really good recipes tomorrow. on... Yeah, I'll be posting it tomorrow. I have some recipes on my blog, my website. And if you guys ever cook something or cook one of my dishes, please, please, please tag me. I'd be more than happy to get you a peek at it. And I'd be really, really happy about that. And you're posting them on Monday Munchies. Oh, yeah. And also be posting your guys' recreations on Monday, a.k.a. Monday Munchies. And they can also email you, tag you if you have any questions. Oh, yeah. If, if you guys don't want to tag me, if you guys have any questions, you guys can also send me a nice Facebook. Oh, 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 one second. Sorry, sorry. One second, one second, one second. Okay. All right, let me help you. Sorry about that. Sorry, hurting. sorry. Was, yeah, we're good. All right, we're good. We're sorry. All right, um, I oh, think Rebecca has yeah. a question. Sorry, guys. Ask Rebecca to ask what the message, what the question is. Sorry, Rebecca, could you just repeat that question? Um, I think. Oh, oh, here. Yeah. One out of all the kids in MasterChef Junior, which one did you get along with the most? Out of all the kids in MasterChef Junior, which one did you get along with the most? Um, Corey was definitely probably Corey, JJ, Sam. Um, Cade, they were all probably my best friends there. I mean, Cade was awesome, Corey's awesome, JJ's super nice, Sam's awesome. So they're probably my favorites. Sam's tail was awesome too. So they're probably a lot of my favorite. Okay. Friends. Do you have a good recipe for buffalo wings? Do you have a good recipe for buffalo wings? Yes, I actually do. Oh, on my buffalo. website, I ha well, I have like a spicy one and a sweet one. Yeah. Yeah, so on my website, I have an amazing uh, wings dish. It's a spicy a sriracha one, and then also a honey barbecue one. So those are really, they are absolutely awesome. I mean, homemade wings, I mean, nothing gets better than that. I mean, they're so delicious, so definitely kind of check that out. So any, ask any more, ask them if you have any more questions. You guys got any more questions? No comment, one second. All right. <laughs> Wait. Have you ever made chicken bacon? It's chicken wrapped in bacon. Have you ever made chicken wrapped in bacon? Um, No, I actually have. This is probably kind of like the fanciest chicken I've ever done. Uh, what's your favorite sweet dish to cook? My favorite sweet dish to cook. Well, like I said, no, I make I a really know. delicious almond tort, but then that's to die for. But then, um, Sharon said you need a dog. Sharon said I need a dog. Tell that to my mom. Yeah, tell it to my mom. You see, I'll, I'll quickly explain to you guys what's going on. My, my, me and my dad and my brother want a dog, but then my mom and my sister don't. So I've literally tried to, to convince her. I've shown her YouTube <laughs> videos of probably the cutest dogs you could either imagine and just like countless images, but it's no luck. So okay. if you guys can help me out with that, I greatly appreciate that. Okay. okay. What type of iPhone do you have? What type of iPhone do you have? Actually, it's an iPhone. It's the old one, iPhone 5. Oh, uh, yeah. We're, we're filming with the iPhone 5S. On the Periscope. Yeah, no, on Periscope. But then for you now, I think it's an iPad. Yeah, yes, yeah, iPad. What's your favorite food to cook? Your favorite food to cook? Definitely a good steak. Do you have a cat? Do you have a cat? No. Speaking of which, since my, my, my mom didn't want, since my mom and my sister didn't want a dog, I said, why don't we get a cat? And she always says yes, but then we never get around to doing anything about it, so it's practically better, so. Uh, what would you have made with the smelly foods in episode four? What would you have made with the smelly foods in episode four? Um, I'm actually not sure about that. Um, sorry. I actually don't know what I would have made, so I'll get back to you on that. Okay. What's your favorite food? My favorite food, uh, probably steak, I think. Can you say hi? I have a bunch of questions. Can you say yeah. hi, Cecilia, please, or a shout out? Shout out to Cecilia. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, thanks for all your support. Nice hair. Where do you live? Nice hair, yeah. Um, I live in Orlando, Florida, so my hometown. Uh, really pleased I found this broadcast. We'll be checking back in the next week. I just got a statement. Really pleased I found this broadcast. Uh, we'll be tuning in next week. Yeah, um, like I said, every single Monday, every week at 7 p.m. Eastern time, I have my amazing kind of cooking live shows like this. And, you know, I hope you guys learned something from this. I mean, I have an absolute amazing time doing this for you guys. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you enjoyed. 
and I'm really, really thankful and happy that I can continue to do these. Okay, rapid fire questions. What's your favorite right. pet? Uh, dog. Do you know One Direction? We were just listening to them today. No, my mom oh my was listening to them. <laughs> and my sister's like, Rapid fire questions. Would you go on another uh, cooking show? Oh, sorry. Would you go on another cooking show like Chop Kids? Uh, yeah, I actually uh, applied for Chop Junior, but I haven't got a response back. So, fingers crossed. Will okay. this be on YouTube tomorrow? Will this be on YouTube? Tomorrow it will be posted on my YouTube channel. Not tonight. Zach Cara. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Oh, sorry. A bunch, yep. of, a bunch of questions. Oops. One second. One second. Everyone, one second. Where's okay, I'll got them. I got them. Yeah. I'm what, so tempted wait, to draw. Oh, what sorry. time do you go to sleep? I try to go to bed at like 8.30, but I'll probably end up going to bed at like 10 because uh, I have like all this cleanup to do by the time I eat dinner, take a shower, all that stuff. So can I'll you do a, sorry, can you do a shout out to Drew? Shout out, shout out to Drew. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoy it. Um, what's your favorite pet? My favorite pet? Um, definitely a dog. Uh, hello, how old are you? Um, uh, I'm 13 years old. Um, uh, what time will you be at the mall? What time will you be at the mall? Like I said, I'm doing a live cooking demo and meet and greet at the Williams Sonoma store at Mall at Millennium. And it starts at 1 p.m. Eastern time. What are you making? Um, I actually made. No, making at the mall. Oh, making at the mall. So I'm going to be doing a tomato soup. And I'm also going to be doing my favorite steak dish on my website. Okay, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Um, I don't know. I really, really, really love Florida, but then I also kind of want to go traveling. So, but for now, but I definitely love Florida. It's my home. Uh, like I said earlier, I want to be a chef. What dish should I make first as a beginner? Uh, just got a question. Like I said, I want to be a chef. What, what dish should I make as a beginner? Um, I would really start off with the basics, start to eggs, and maybe work your way to a delicious burger recipe. I actually have one on my blog. And then I would try to really progress yourself Take it slow. I know it'll be kind of boring at the start, but take it slow and then evolve yourself to, to, to better and better dishes so you really feel comfortable with your knife skills, your cooking proteins, all that stuff. What's your favorite cooking show? Favorite cooking show? Um, oh, I don't know. I mean, there's so many I watch. I don't know. What's your favorite color? My favorite color is blue. Uh, do you have musically? Do you have musically? No, I don't. Um... Say hey, Please Grace. Say Gracie. Hi, Gracie. Thank you so much for tuning in. Do you watch Hell's Kitchen? No, I don't watch Hell's Ki- Kitchen Are you because home- it's past my bedtime. Are you homeschooled? Uh, yeah, I actually am homeschooled. Are you planning to open your own cooking show when you grow up? Uh, are you planning to do your own cooking show when you grow up? Yeah, I actually do want to have my own cooking show one day. Uh, do you like Paula Dean or Barefoot Condessa? Hi. Uh, Sorry, did you repeat that? Do you like Paula Dean or Be- Barefoot Contessa? Do you Contessa? like Paula Dean or Barefoot Contessa? Yeah, I actually watch a lot of Barefoot Contessa, and it's sometimes Paula Dean, but mostly Barefoot Contessa. Uh, Say, hold on one second. Say bye to Matthew, Matthew from yeah. England and Alex. Bye, Matthew and Alex. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it, and i just really glad you guys took a chance to, to come and tune in. Uh, can you say hi, Mia? Hi, Mia. <laughs> Uh, so another much. person. How old are you? I'm 13. <laughs> okay, we got through the questions. Do you like Anne Burrell or Tyler Flor- Do you Florence? Like Anne Burrell or Tyler Florence? Um, I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I like them both. It's pretty cool. Okay, what grade are you in? I am in grade eight. Say hi to Dulce. Hi. Sorry, hi Sorry. to Dulce. Hi Dulce. Can you say hi Mia from Houston, Texas? Hi Mia. All the way from Houston, Texas. Uh, big shout out to you. Thanks so much. Can Jimmy. you? Sorry. Can you say hey, Allie? Hi, Allie. Thank you so much for for tuning into the broadcast. I really, really appreciate all you guys' support. Um, who is your favorite actor? My favorite actor. I guess I don't really have a favorite actor. I mean, uh, I don't really pick favorites between actors. I just kind of like the movie. So. Uh, can you say hi, JD? Hi, JD. <laughs> What do you plan for your future career? What do you plan for your future career? Um, well, like, I really, really want to be a professional tennis player, but then I'll, once I retire, that's when I really want to pursue the culinary world. Okay, quick fire questions. Can you say hi, Melanie, from Miami, Florida? Hi, Melanie, from from Florida. Thanks so much for tuning in. What's your favorite sport? 
My favorite sport's definitely tennis. Like I said, I take tennis. Hold on. Who's your favorite competitor in Master Chef? Who's your favorite competitor in Master Chef? Um, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Uh, uh, can you say hi, Taylor? Hi, Taylor. Uh, did you watch the Super Bowl? If so, who are you rooting for? Did you watch the, the, sh the Super Bowl? If so, who are you rooting for? And yeah, I watched most of the Super Bowl. And I was rooting for the Panthers because they were playing really, really good. But then I actually didn't mind the fact that the Broncos won because they're an amazing team too. So, Can you say hi, JDF, Minnesota? Hi, JDF, Minnesota. Thank you so much for tuning in. What's your favorite sport? Favorite sports, tennis. What's your inspiration? Um, my inspiration for cooking is definitely my mom and my sister. Uh, can you give a shout out to St. Louis, please? Big shout out to, to, to St. Louis. I actually have my, one of my, <clears throat> man, I'm talking a lot. Sorry. All right, All right. Keep, keep them coming, keep them coming. I'm, I'm, uh, can you say hi, Chantel? <laughs> hi, Chantel. Thank you so much for tuning in. How are you? I'm 13 years old. Um... Gracie from Florida. Hi. Hi, Gracie. Thank you so, so much for coming um, in. If you meet a tennis, who would it be? If you're... Anyone from tennis, who would it be? A anyone from tennis who would it be? Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, Quick, because it... Probably Serena and... Are you in touch with any of the chefs? Are you in touch with the junior chefs? Yeah, I actually still... I message... Yeah, like we all can. Say hi to Donovan and Melanie from Hi, Donovan and Melanie and the Intrepidus. If, if I uh, miss a few questions, my computer died, so, so it should be back on you now in just a sec. Any, I apologize about that. All right. Do you play? Oh, say hi to Jordan Pierce. Hi, Jordan. Will you do a meet and greet outside of Florida? Will you do a meet and greet outside of Florida? Um, I'm not sure about that. I haven't really thought about that, so I'll get back to you guys. Say hi, Mercedes. Hi, Mercedes. What's the dish in front of you? Okay. Uh, the dish in front of me is a chicken and lard stuffed with sautéed mushrooms, uh, onions, uh, Gruyere cheese with a arugula pesto, roasted cauliflower, a uh, wonton uh, strip, and then also a pomegranate reduction. Okay. Say bye to Daniel. Bye, Daniel. Thank okay. you so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. A you. bunch of questions. Where do you live? Uh, I live in Orlando. Um, do you play Minecraft? Do you play Minecraft? No, I actually don't. Can you um, give a shout out to Sequoia Walker Thames on Music Alley? A uh, big shout out to Sequoia Walker uh, Thames. Walker Thames on Musical, you think? Musically, yeah. Are you excited to go on the MasterChef cruise? Are you excited to go on the MasterChef cruise? Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, it's. I didn't want to go on a cruise for a while, but then my dad gets seasick, so. Yeah, I'm super, super, super excited to go. Hi to Rikita. Hi, Rikita. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Hi. What's your favorite wild game to cook? My favorite wild game to cook? Um, I don't really cook too much wild game, but I cooked venison on the show, and that was really, really delicious. Can you make a dessert? Can you make a dessert? Um, Yeah, on my last two periscope, I actually made a souffle, so that was really, really good. Uh, what's your favorite instrument? My favorite instrument. I actually don't play any, any instruments, so I don't know. Okay, what did you make today? Um, today I made a Gruyere cheese with sauteed onions and mushrooms, stuffed <laughs> chicken and lard with a arugula pesto, some roasted cauliflower, a wonton, a crispy wonton strip, and a pomegranate reduction. Yeah, right. that's it. Call it a day. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can call it a day. All right, I All think right. I'm going to wrap up this one. Guys, I mean, it was a long one, and I had an amazing time. And uh, thank you guys. Broadcast or no? No. Okay, we're done. All right. Um, I'm actually gonna wrap up this broadcast. Thank you guys so so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming and continue to supporting me on all the social media and all the broadcasts. So I'm really really happy and so thankful that all you guys can come and support me, and I'm super happy. Say thank you to Jamie and Sharon yeah, for really support. Yeah, thank you so much, Jamie and Sharon, for all you guys' support. You guys have been absolutely amazing. So big shout out to Jamie and Sharon. Thank you so much. And tune in next week. Jamie. Yeah, and uh, you guys can also tune in next week. I'll be posting this beautiful dish on my blog.
tomorrow, and I'll be doing another broadcast next Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please check me out on YouTube, Periscope, uh, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the social media handles. For, for the social media handles, my username is Zach underscore car. And like I said, to get to this, to get the recipe to this, you got to check out my website, Zach-Car.com. So thank you guys again, and I'm going to be wrapping up this broadcast.